All right, in today's video, we're gonna do something a little different. Rather than reviewing a mod as I can't possibly get two reviews done in a single week, I just, I don't have enough time. I'm gonna bring up five fairly easy to do mods that I'm surprised we haven't seen yet. So kick back, grab a big old jug of milk, and let's hop right into it. Wow. All right, the rule of this list is simple. Nothing ridiculous. Anything on this list should be the kind of thing you can rattle off in a weekend or less. With that said, let's start with my first pick, a mod that removes unlawful mounts. CA has a bizarre fixation with giving mounts to everyone and their dog, which on its own wouldn't be a huge deal, but it's when it bleeds into cases where it makes no sense to the lore, that's where I draw the line. I'm sure I don't even have to name names, but just in case you're wondering, there's a few of them right off the top of my head. Let's start with one from all the way back in the first game, Wolfric the Wanderer. Wolfric's deal has always been that he is compelled to challenge others to one-on-one -on -one combat. He's even blessed by the Chaos Gods to always know which insult will get the other person to accept the challenge, even being able to speak within their own tongue to do it. On his own, this makes sense. Find the enemy in question, challenge them, beat them, and keep on wandering. The issue stems from tossing him onto mounts. Now, the horse option is debatable for lore accuracy, and it's definitely not tabletop accurate. But a chariot, or especially a goddamn mammoth, completely undoes his lore. At that point, he isn't dueling, he's hanging out on the back of a giant woolly elephant while that stomps on his enemies for him. Moving back over to game two, same sort of issue, Lokir Felhart. Lokir, not unlike Wolfric, is a dedicated duelist in the tabletop and stays on foot all the time as a result of that. His two armaments, two magically enchanted daggers, are designed for single target elimination, that's something he's very talented at. And given that he's a pirate captain, it makes sense that he'd stay on foot so as to take up as little space as possible on the small ships of the Dark Elves. So it's a little bizarre that the only mount that he has access to is a goddamn legendary dragon. Something I haven't seen referenced in any lore or tabletop entries apart from CA's own doing. Again, this makes no sense from either perspective as a dragon kind of screws his chance to maneuver and use his daggers effectively, while also making him ridiculously impractical when you stop and consider his lore. And again, I'm unsure why CA felt compelled to completely create brand new lore to make this terrible decision come to fruition. Our last pick is one that's become incredibly infamous since the last patch, this being Teclis's Arcane Phoenix mount. Teclis, if for some reason you're unfamiliar, is described as being exceedingly feeble. It's actually a central part of his lore, in fact. It also dictated his strategies in both the tabletop and Total Warhammer 2 when it first launched. He's among the single best spellcasters in either game, but if he got caught in melee, he was dead. This was actually the main reason to take the horse, not to increase his combat prowess, but to allow him to flee if you were in danger of being attacked. The Arcane Phoenix, instead, takes him and effectively makes him into the strongest melee lord in the High Elf arsenal, surpassing even his own brother Tyrion, who, going by the lore, is supposed to be one of the best melee fighters in the entire world. Again, in every possible way, putting this underneath Teclis makes no goddamn sense. The solution for these three issues is actually really easy from a mechanics perspective. Go into the three lord skill trees, go into this particular skill, and delete the mounts from the three. Bing bang boom, easy peasy. If the mod author really wanted to get fancy pants about it, they could even give him a bonus skill or something to make him a bit better of a foot lord, such as adding in charge defense or something, but this would really only need to be done on the first two, and frankly wouldn't even be necessary, it would just be a nice to have kind of thing. For number two, I'm actually going to go with the single hardest entry on this entire list, making a custom unique lord or hero, but for modded factions. Plenty of people make heroes and lords for vanilla factions, but vanilla is sometimes a little bit more to deal with. You're constrained by lore, conflicts, etc. But a modded faction usually surpasses all those issues. You want a head cannon, a corn worshipping elven berserker lord for the Amber Kingdom? Fill your boots. Always wanted to make a depth guard lord with a backstory for serving in the Silver Realms from old versus new? Have at it! Want to add anything to Mixus factions, We Special Boys, or any of the numerous fantastic modded factions? Go for it! The nice thing is, is not only is, is this more freeing from a lore perspective, but it also adds way more to the game than tossing yet another unique lord into factions that are already swimming in them. Many modded factions have to make do with only a single named character, so helping out in this way not only gets your own work noticed, but also helps out in the modding community a little bit more as well. 
And because you're not having to deal with creating an entire faction around them, a lot of the grunt work is already done for you. All you're doing is planning, making a few unique traits or reasons for that lord existing, and then punching out your dude or dudette. Like I said, the skills and traits definitely make this the slowest entry on the list, but even then, I think as long as you're using either mostly vanilla assets or skills and traits from the mod itself, it's the kind of mod you can pump out pretty quick. My next suggestion is something that I would have never considered to be an issue back in Total Warhammer 1, but has rapidly become an issue in the second game to me. Chevrons, or specifically, the fact that CAs have begun handing them out like candy. In the first game, getting a squad up to level 4 or 5 took a while, and you had to be real careful not to lose them, lest you lose all that progress. With the way the game currently is though, I've had vanilla situations where I'm recruiting at rank 7. This is utterly ridiculous, and it takes away a huge part of the game too, and an interesting part of the game. Instead of being focused on keeping that unit alive that you've had since turn 1, it's now almost always preferable just to boot them and then recruit a higher tier unit in their place as soon as they're damaged. So our mod in question would have to go through and find every right, building bonus, event, and skill that boosts hiring rank and then delete them from the game, leaving only traits or provincial effects. This would of course be rather time consuming just from a physically finding all the data sets point of view, but A it could be split up on a faction by faction basis, and B even then I think it's the kind of thing you'd probably rattle off on a weekend as long as you were actually focused on doing it that weekend. Alright, already on to option 4 now, and at this time it's more of a fun one. So instead of taking stuff out, let's add some different stuff back in, specifically around Tehinawan's sacrifice mechanic. It's no great secret that the sacrifice mechanic is... Uh, it's, it's less than loved, we'll say. Many of the entries on it aren't even worth taking, some of the more expensive unlocks are vastly outperformed by the cheaper ones, and the max level skill is hilariously weak for how long it takes you to finally get to it and unlo unlock it. While many players have asked CA to change this system, I've always been shocked that modders haven't swapped out the unlocks for other things. Imagine if you had some specific blessing spawnings that were tied into the system, or specific regiments of renown, or greater effects on the campaign uh, experience were utilized instead, or adding more interesting traits for the unlock red skink heroes, or skink lords I should say. Really, the sacrifice mechanic actually provides a ton of options for modders to play around with, and I'm shocked that no one's really taken the chance to use it for something better. The best thing is, is, you don't even need to swap the whole thing out all in one shot. Even just identifying one substandard sacrifice that you don't like and replacing it would be an amazing proof of concept. I also have a bit of a bonus entry on this one because this wouldn't be easy but it is related to the entry. I'm really surprised no one ever did custom lords or heroes and put them into specific unlocks within the sacrifice mechanic because that was literally the very first thing I saw or thought of when I saw it like a tech unlocked lore, but way more interesting and specific to Tehina 1. Alright, so our last mod option on my little top 5 list is one that I've actually brought up before, and it's ultimately one that I hope CA changes down the road, but I've always still found it odd that the best units from each Skaven clan are available to every clan. Now there's a bit of an asterisk on this because it does look like one modder has begun to play around uh, with the concept of what I'm suggesting here uh, in the mod of Monsters and Men, which I'll link to down below. But while that mod puts its own special units into each roster on a case-by-case -case basis, it still doesn't touch the vanilla stuff in any way. What I would recommend doing is just heading to each faction and making the stuff that makes sense for one faction, more than others, exist only for that one faction. Incredible, cutting-edge technological creation? You're gonna need to be Clan Scryer to, to get that unit. Plague Monk, Sensor Bearers and Plague Priests? Clan Pestilins or Bust? Sneaky Stabby Ninjas? Clan Eshin's gonna be your only option there. It would be hilariously easy to a change to make because there's literally a tab in the files that show which factions can unlock each unit. You'd simply have to go to whatever unit you're looking at and then just tag it so it only unlocks for the one clan. Now again, this is something I really hope CA eventually fixes one day themselves by putting in a trading mechanic between Skaven clans where requesting a special unit from one clan that's not your own would require payment or a quest of some kind which is exactly how the Skaven are in the lore. Scryer doesn't just make wondrous designs and then share them with the class, they make wondrous designs and then sell them to whoever can pay them for it. But while we wait for CA to implement that, there's still a really easy fix to have modders put a temporary uh, hold up on place, which would also help provide some different playstyles to the available factions. Anyways, that's it for this one though, next week we're going to be back to our normal schedule. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.